All right, so, um, so this is what we covered the last time. And this is uh, sort of the geometry that we didn't have time to explore last time. And the reason I'm introducing all of this, so you know, this is actually a really useful tool if you are trying to work through those paradoxes, some of which are covered in that note. But you know, let's say you are more practical. You don't care about all this stuff. All you want to do is calculation. You want to figure out what happens in a collision or um, the reason I'm introducing this tool of four vector is because there are it's useful in a way vector was useful for us. So there's a position vector, but that's not the only vector. Force is a vector, momentum is a vector. Um, what else was a vector? Impulse, but that's kind of momentum. Anything else that was a vector? Velocity was a vector, acceleration was a vector. Angular momentum. But so you remember how many quantities had a sense of direction? They all were vectors, and you could use whatever mathematical methods you could use uh, space time with the geometry, you could apply that to momentum. Right? And what I will tell, tell you is that this four vector formalism is a similar to that. There are additional four vectors that are not just the space time coordinates. It's uh, another quantity, like dealing with the momentum, that's uh, actually four vector. When you had a question? Oh, I thought I saw a hand. So uh, I want to go over some of those additional four vectors. And I think the way to introduce that, um, so let me introduce this one energy momentum by first showing you that I can form an invariant out of this um, energy and momentum relationship that we have already covered. So let me uh, point it out this way, okay. So I guess I should have called this under the heading of energy momentum for vector. Energy So we already covered the idea of relativistic energy and momentum. Let me just write down the formulas that were either derived or I just gave it to you. I gave you the momentum. So relativistic momentum was gamma mv. Remember that? Yes. What was the expression for relativistic energy? Relativistic total energy. Mass yeah, mass energy plus, okay, what was the expression for the mass energy? Okay, so mc squared. And to get from this mass energy to kinetic energy, it's just a simple modification. Yeah, vector of gamma. So this is the expression for relativistic energy. It's surprisingly simple expression. In fact, the kinetic energy is the complicated one because then you have to subtract out mc squared. So what I will do from this point on is that I'm really never going to refer to kinetic energy. I mean, you know, you shouldn't know how to switch back and forth because sometimes a problem will give you the information of kinetic energy instead of total energy. But um, it's like, you know, if a question gave you uh, information in imperial units, miles per hour. Usually the first thing you would do is convert it to SI units, right? So I do the same thing when I'm given information about energy. I first convert it to information in terms of the total energy and then take it from there. So this is what I want to uh, claim and prove to you that um, this particular combination of momentum and energy is invariant. And um, let me try to recall how I wrote it. Um, so this is the combination I remember. E squared minus momentum squared is supposed to be invariant, except if I write it this way, it's a, a little bit problematic. What's wrong with this expression? Dimension. Dimensions. Um, do other people know what gauge means by dimensions? Samuel, what do we mean by dimensions? Mm. Yeah, it's a kind of vocabulary. Can you look at this and see what's wrong with this? 
yeah, the unit. And dimension is a synonym for unit when you know, we are doing something called the dimension, dimensional analysis. Yeah. So yeah, units are wrong. This is in joule squared. So this is in kilogram times uh, unit of energy. <coughs> <laughs> meter squared per second squared. I think that's the correct unit of energy, right? Okay, um, squared. And this is in the unit of kilogram times meter per second squared. So I'm missing a unit of, I guess, meter per second squared. So um, actually, depending on the literature you're reading, sometimes you will see this. It's the case where people are working with a unit of c equal to 1. Like if that's the unit you are working with, people will actually write that. But as I you know, promised to you guys at the, sometimes early, I won't work in this unit. So what I do instead is I put in whatever factor of c necessary to make the units come out right. So the thing I should do is, I guess, take this, divide it by c squared. That will make the units come out right. Yeah. So, um, so this is, I guess, a kind of an early warning. If I make a mistake in, you know, putting in the correct factors of C, that's just a bad, uh, bad habit from upper division courses <laughs> sipping through. I'll try not to make that mistake. So what I'm claiming is that this is an invariant quantity. In particular, I am claiming that this is a Lorentz invariant. What do we mean when we say something is Lorentz invariant? I mean, you know, just English-wise, what does invariant mean? Unchanging. And unchanging, right? Not changing. What do you think the adjective Lorentz is referring to? Yeah, under the Lorentz transformation. So under this transformation, I'm claiming this is invariant. Uh, whatever do I mean? I mean, I have Lorentz transformation for coordinate, but Technically, you don't yet have a Lorentz transformation for you know, um, energy and momentum, unless I haven't given that to you yet. So one sense in which you can understand this is when we talk about Lorentz transformation, what we are talking about is a change of reference frame, comparing something that's at rest with something that's moving at constant velocity. So what I am claiming is that if you write this, in any two different reference frames. Maybe, you know, I'm talking about this one kilogram mass, and you could write this in the reference frame where it's at rest, zero, not moving. And if you write this exact same expression in the reference frame where it's moving at half the speed of light, somehow this combination should work out to be the same thing. So let's try that and see if that's what we get. So in the reference frame where this is at rest, what should this combination come out to be? Let me write that on the left, because that feels like it's an easy thing to write down. What's the momentum? Zero. Yeah, zero, all right. <laughs> What's the energy? Yeah, so it's uh, gamma's one, when it's <laughs> rest. So it's mc squared, squared. So I have m squared, c to the fourth power, divided by this. So it's going to be m squared, c squared. All right, so the, um, the sweeping claim that I'm making is that I can calculate this in any other reference frame, and I'm supposed to get the exact same thing back. I'm supposed to get mc squared back, or you know, mc, the whole thing squared. So let me write down here. So this would be in a, uh, in a reference frame. Um, how should I put it? Let's say the mass is moving to right at some speed of v. Uh, reference frame where m moving at velocity of beta c x hat. All right, um, so energy then is gamma mc squared, where this gamma is based on that beta. Right. So let me write that down. So it's a gamma mc squared, the whole thing squared, divided by c squared, minus 
the expression for momentum is this. V is beta c, so let me write that down. Gamma m beta c squared. Ah, I guess that's it. Um, well, um, I guess I can factor on some stuff, right? Yes? So let me factor out what factors out. Uh, I see a factor, factor of gamma. Oops, I meant to get a black pen. I see a factor of gamma m, gamma m, and c in every one of these. So let me, uh, how should I? Yes, yeah, so let me factor out gamma squared, gamma squared, m squared, and I have at least the c squared. C squared. Then I get, and I think actually these factors work out to be c squared, right? c to the fourth divided by c squared, so it's actually the c squared. All right. So with that factored out, what's remaining here is one. Right? Just the one. Okay. One minus what remains here? One minus beta squared. Okay. Anything else you see that cancels out? Yeah, oh, maybe I need red. It's uh, kind of helpful to have some of these formulas just memorized in your head so that you can do the math mentally because, I mean, I could write it down. What do you see potentially canceling out? Yeah, gamma with the one minus beta squared. Let me write it out so that it's easier to see. Gamma is one over square root of one minus beta squared, but I'm squaring it. So it just becomes 1 over 1 minus beta squared. So that's gamma squared. Well, these two are the same thing. So they cancel each other out, unless beta is equal to 1. Um, well, then you end up with m squared c squared, which is what I was claiming that this is always equal to. So this is another Lorentz invariant. Let me write it out in two different formats. You can, um, you can write it in the, essentially the way I wrote it here. Um, so let me write it out this way, I guess. M is equal to, I'm just solving this for M. You can say M is equal to square root of um, E squared over C to the fourth minus P squared over C squared. We give a name to this. Um, and uh, let me just give it a grandiose name. It's a bit more you know, pompous than it actually is. This is what's called invariant mass, or sometimes it's called, it's also called rest mass. Does this sound like a quantity that you already know? What's the invariant mass of this one kilogram mass? One kilogram? One kilogram, right? That's what we calculated initially here. Yeah, so what, what, sorry, what I'm calling invariant mass is what you've known as, this is what you have known as mass, your entire career in physics. I guess the only reason I'm um, pointing this out is there's this archaic phrase called relativistic mass that some older textbooks use, it, which is going out of style, but in case you see the phrase relativistic mass, the phrase relativistic mass refers to this expression, gamma times m. And I will just briefly say why this expression is going out of, um, going, uh, falling out of favor, is that there is no distinction between relativistic mass and relativistic energy. The only difference is factor of C, which if you're in this unit, then it's no difference at all. So that's why this doesn't describe anything that's any different from what you already know as energy. That's why this term is going out of use. When people want to be just extra sure that you are not mistaking what they are calling mass, people say invariant mass. Or you could just say mass, and that means invariant mass. And it shouldn't mean invariant mass unless you're talking to someone 80 years old. <laughs> old people doing special relativity. Well, old professors. <laughs> so yeah, so this is uh, the, another Lorentz invariant quantity. And actually, um, this is the format you will see this in your textbook. Your textbook will call this mass-energy relationship. So the mass-energy relationship is you could kind of express it for energy. You could say that this is equal to 
E squared is equal to the rest energy squared. So MC squared squared plus, and uh, I guess what is kinetic energy? Well, it's not exactly kinetic energy squared, but it is related to kinetic energy squared. Kinetic energy, PC squared. This is what some people would call mass energy relationship. And let me just, uh, before we go into break, let me just point out one useful feature of this. The expressions we have been writing down so far, they depended on this mass not being zero. Like if you had a, a particle that has zero mass, um, you would run into trouble <laughs> because um, be there are examples of particles that have zero mass but has non-zero energy. And what you end up having to say is it's zero times infinity, and I can make the number whatever I want it to be, and which is a bit of a flippant way. I will say this expression is valid even when m is equal to zero. This is correct. So when it's correct when you have m not equal to zero, but it's correct even um, even when m is equal to zero. So. For a particle that has no mass, light is actually going to be an example of that. You have energy is given by momentum times c, speed of light. Um, so this is another example of uh, Lorentz invariant. And what that means is that uh, the quantities, quantities that are forming this and this can be thought of as quantities here and here. So energy is the time component of energy momentum four vector, and momentum is the space component of energy momentum four vector. So let me give you the let me give you the um, Lorentz transformation for energy and momentum. This is the Lorentz transformation for energy and momentum. I can take this out and replace them with well, the time component E over C, the x component, y component. C component of momentum. This corresponds to time. These are your space uh, components. And when you consider this energy and momentum of this object in a reference frame that's moving relative to wherever this is already written, then, um, then that's how you would get the new energy and new momenta, momentum in that other reference frame that's moving relative to the reference frame where this was described. 